Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Alice Ephemera. Let's do this. Let's make some Alice Ephemera. I've had a few people now ask me to have fun with the Alice Ephemera. I've made a few Alice journals um, and they've all been sold and gone. But who doesn't love an Alice journal? And I like them because it stimulates... I don't know, it just engenders fun and innovation. Um, I like, it's more interactive, if you will, than, than, yeah, I just love them for that very reason. Right, so my tip for the day before we get to start doing anything would be to say, choose your cover first before you start you're doing your ephemera so this one um was a 50 cent thrift shop find and i can work on this at a later date but just to do um some ephemera that's got a two inch spine and i think it's about uh eight by six great size and it will fit in a folded a4 piece of paper and that will just fit in beautifully. So it'll be minimal cutting down of my pages. That's my tip. And the reason why, obviously, well, especially for newbies who, who may not, um, who, who just might want a few tips. If you know the size of your cover and you know the size of your pages, it's far easier then to mass make your ephemera that will fit in uh, and look appropriate for example there's there's a that's a that's a mass made envelope out of book pages but that's giving me a good height and so I can just go straight ahead and mass make this make them all and I like doing them thin out of thin papers vintage papers which gives a vibe because digitals are amazing I love using digitals but I always Fill it with as much original vintage ephemera as I can because that's what gives I mean I'm all about the vintage uh, anyway but it's the feel it, it's it's the feel of your artwork when you use vintage papers right so that was the that was the tip of the day there um, so you'll need some music paper and if you don't have the real deal then there's heaps of digitals and freebies um, on our on different sites and things where you can print that out um, but if you can get the real sorry for that wobble oops nearly made myself dizzy hang on Oh lordy, yeah. The be the the better that you that that you can because that's in really good condition and it's beautifully yellowed. The feel of it is incredible. Love that. And of course, you'll need book pages. Now here's some that I've done earlier. I did a um, I took a leaf out of Tina's book from Shabby Dabby Doodah and I've mass made some already but I thought we could do some together right what a mess okay oh and the other the other tip is to have a notebook or a scrapbook where you can do miniaturized versions of your favorite pieces of ephemera because sometimes you get a mental blank and you don't want to be doing all the same pockets and all the same journal cards and you we learn so much and we gain so much inspiration from others i'll just show you mine I've just got a, a ring bound um, book 
I think I bought this from Coles of all places, and it's just or might might have been Kmart, but it's made of craft card or craft paper. It's a seven and a half by eight, but it can be any anything. You could use an altered book to do this, and we've seen so many people on um, on YouTube. Corey Darman springs to mind, where they utilise um, uh, an ephemera book so that. Yeah, so here you can see I have done miniature versions of my favourite of my favourite tags and my favourite pockets, so that as I'm flipping through, I can easily be reminded of good ideas and what worked for me, what I really loved. And I've just made notes on them, tags as belly bands. Um, I haven't written down um, makers' names because, quite frankly, we all borrow ideas from everybody. And I, yeah, I don't think there is, <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, no, you don't probably, but yeah. Um, so they've just come from everything, and a lot of them I had them in an old notebook. And I thought I would just um, do them properly and put them all in one in, all in one spot in this in this book. And so far, it's working out pretty good. So that's just to give you an idea, and it's a good thing to do. It's sort of like your own private uh, scrapbook of ideas. So we won't go we won't go through it all. Um, there's my texture paste recipe. Actually, if you do a screenshot of that, or it's on my YouTube channel when we made that. But yeah, you can do a screenshot of that if you like. Embossing. I mean, we've just I've just trialed everything I've ever done, and I've popped it in here. And also, because I've got a YouTube channel, I can then go in here for inspiration. Um, to talk about things and to use things so that is my second tip of the day right now oh my lordy so what do I do I don't, I don't know where to start actually now whoops sorry bump that I'm a bit I'm a bit kind of nervous because I've I don't yeah this is sort of like a craft along with me and I haven't I don't know if I've ever done that I'm not sure but that's another little one that will go in that scrapbook and that was a miniature um Tina did that off shabby dabby doodah and that was out of one piece of a4 paper I've just used a small I've shrunk it down and used a tiny little piece of uh, book page there so that I can put it into my little scrapbook but a tag goes in there and this end uh, was going to be the flap and I think Tina stuck that in there and then when it closes up it makes a nice closure but I thought what if you left that open and then you've got a secret hiding spot there a nice another little secret writing and in the meantime that could easily be decorated up to just flip in and that was somebody's idea the other day of texture paste stencil down to hold down a piece of lace and it works it works really good right so that's got to go into my scrapbook later right so and the other thing with that scrapbook uh, I've got the template for this just sticking in the envelope in the scrapbook so that I can get that. I've just done a template for a small um, envelope shape and I've stitched around and that makes a really nice pocket in your journal. Plus that can be closed so that can make it not only a pocket for something but you could have writing space here and here and you could shut that and put a, put a little closure on it so that is quite versatile. And you could have it being able to be closed or being open. And then there's another pocket down behind that. 
that was using two pieces of book page that one right so that was a good mess make this was a piece of a Daphne's diary page and I've done that there and I can paint over the words I can put paper I can texture paste I can gesso uh, or you could have that as a standalone to pop in inside another pocket so that that is invaluable that's one of my very favorite things I've tried to make at least three of each of these so that because in this in this uh, journal that we're going to do I'm going to do three signatures I think so I'd like to have at least three of everything now this is a really easy uh, this is using one A4 sheet of coffee dyed paper and it's basically just folding it in half folding it in half again concertinaing it and then making one long flap so you'd cut out the top of that across there and just leave one long flap there so that, that folds down you just tuck the corners in that closes like that but on a page flip that up and you've got all that extra secret writing space so I made three of those they, they've yet to be decorated and of course I mean they're very plain just using coffee dyed paper however that's a digital um, I've double sided photocopied a digital I think that one's from Ruby and Pearl and that looks that looks really that looks really lovely as well I think that was out of the dressmaker bundle I love those designs um, and here we have some more this these are out of Daphne's diaries and uh, I've done a template so that looks like a really cool I like the pointed top envelope shape and and it was and it's stiffer paper it was I think these were menu placemats that you could just rip out and so they'll come in handy there was four of those um, these were printable they were out of a, some kind of a kit I bought and they were a printable fold out but I've added a piece of uh, coffee dyed paper and folded it over and then I'll put a closure onto the back and they make a really lovely tuck so I think they've got three of those right that is just a recycle envelope that I have covered and stitched around with the sewing machine with old dictionary page that which is very thin because if you're going to cover a thin envelope with thin dictionary paper then you get surprisingly robust uh, pocket I mean just an easy, I love doing these pockets and I stitch them into each signature and you've got a pocket on that side and a pocket on that side and so easy ready-made pocket it doesn't get any easier than that does it right now these were just uh, business size envelopes and I've covered them front and back with book page and I've just put one I've, I've, I've folded over a um, coffee dyed piece of A4 paper and so then I've got two of those and then I folded them in half and I stitched them down the middle just a few little pages and all you do then is slice off one end and I think this was an envelope from uh, Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodah and you've got a pocket so that can be a nice I think she called them pocket envelope so easy but I mean those papers are from 1913 the feel of them are, are just beautiful they were from an old law journal so I've got three of those they're they're stitched but waiting to be decorated right now these these were these these were from 
a long, long time ago. And uh, perhaps I saw them four or five years ago. Uh, I'm wanting to say Pam at the Paper Outpost. Uh, and I've made them very thin because when you make these journals too, and this is for, for newbies, the more the thinner that your ephemera is, I mean, if you're going to put so much ephemera in, very quickly it will bulk up. And I've <laughs> I have a gator mouth in most of my journals. So yeah, the thinner the, the thinner the better. So I had some music page. So I've just cut a piece of music paper and then I've cut a piece of corresponding alternate in that case it was a tea dyed a coffee dyed piece of paper and then another one on top so you've actually got three pieces of paper but by putting them just a skinny smaller one on top of that one and pasting it down gluing it down onto that and making sure you can write on it and then the smaller one gets glued on the top of that too. And then I've found these little stickers, one, two, three. So that will be glued onto the back of your page and you'll have one, two, and then three pieces of uh, covered writing space. And they are adorable and you can decorate them up anyhow you like, just by using very, very thin uh, book pages or music sheets and instead of adding more digitals to cover them I've used um, some sewing pattern paper which is which was lovely and yellowed and then I've just stamped on the top to give it that old world flavor so I have three of those this was also the very same idea, but taking it in the portrait idea. So I've done three pieces of paper, but by straddling them and gluing them, gluing, gluing them down. So do you open one and then that's glued to the next one, but straddle down a little bit. And then of course, that's this back piece is glued to the front of this piece. And you've got, and if you put these little circle tabs so that people will understand that you can open it up. And they're really thin. They're really thin. And by using very thin lined paper, this is where the yellow lined paper that I got, that I bought today in those cheap books, that will come in really handy to line little things like that for extra writing space. So there's three of those, different and unusual. This one I've used a, a decorative scissors to just cut the top before I've glued them all together. So there's those. Then we come to the pockets. Right, so I've done a taller pocket and I like this one because that is the secret writing space under there. And you've got a, a pocket here and you've got a pocket here and a pocket here and a pocket here. And you could even have a hidden pocket here or here, depending on how you glue it down. Um, so that was using four pieces of book page. And I try when I, when I got the book, Every title page usually has um, a nice blank piece of paper. If you save that for the front, then that saves, you know, putting on an extra piece of writing pa paper. So, and the, there's a there's a title page on the back, but that will be glued into the into the thing. Then all I have to do is make the tags to fit in. Right. So there's three of those somewhere. There's another one. And by, yeah, now this is a bit different. This one's got the pocket on the bottom. 
this and and the secret flap there this one has got a flap on the bottom and that pulls down to give you a secret writing space underneath but that looks like a pocket and then you've got one only one tag spot there or possibly two in behind it but that's really really thin paper so shall we fold one of the pockets this is um this is an old envelope i got it in the mail today actually with a bill and i was having a look at it and i thought instead of covering it why don't i make use of the windows by putting a pretty piece of paper in behind and i can glue that i can glue that face up to that window so that I've still got a pocket and then I thought what about what about painting what about painting this either in gesso and then doing some maybe stencil paste texture paste over the top or get out my uh, acrylic paints and paint the front and the back and see what happens and then that that can be stitched in probably to a signature like that and it'll be it'll be two pockets so that we could try that and then um, Wendy's journal adventures was doing I think she was doing these uh, coin envelopes the other day I think or somebody was and that's that's a piece of the Barbara Streisand book and it was uh, a title page with a nice picture on the other side of it and they were really really easy to do with a gusset very quick and simple um, and just rounded the corners of the flap so I've got three of those right so that's another little envelope you can do this in any size but you've got this is used two pieces of ancient paper. Oh, it's 1951. I suppose that's ancient. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 10 years older than me. So yeah, pretty ancient. Um, but by folding it in and then folding it in and folding down the corners, you've got several little secret spots there and a nice little pocket down here. And that can be made I've made bigger ones in this and decorated up they look really gorgeous right so what else do we have to get rid of my fountain pen um, that's 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 another one I've used some um, what's that paper called I P and Ola roll there I'll just get rid of some of these digitals That was um, that was actually out of a Daphne's diary, and I've uh, put one on top of the other there and made a nice little either a, either a card or a belly band. Right, put that over to the side. Okay. right so you can see that that again they're all these are all ready to either be glued or stitched or decorated so i found a white piece there two three four right i've made quite a lot of those already one two three four five so there's five of those and then all you need is scraps and quotes it's amazing how they look and I've left them paper clipped in case I decide sometimes it's easier to cover behind if if they're all single pages just take the clip off and sometimes it's a lot easier 
to work with a single page like just to cover to cover that would be a lot easier than if I glue that then and then I'm struggling putting that down okay These are some of my very favorite things to do. Um, there's two I did yesterday uh, with just the pocket on the bottom and one here and perhaps one in behind, but that's just book page, two pieces of book page. And they make, they make really handy and lovely envelopes, pockets. I mean, right. So I'll leave, I'll leave one out to that one. And actually you can see by, by that, that that's just a smidgen taller than the book page, which is the template I'm using. But if you look at the cover that I'll be using, it's still well within the um, and it will be e very easy to just take off a sliver on the bottom. So yeah have your template there or if you don't want to put a pe an extra piece of paper on your work surface you can just open out your page your A4 page and you could mark it with a little piece of washi tape you just mark it with a little piece of washi tape on your surface so that you know where am I my own frame so you can maybe pop it there so you can see where the top how big it is from there to there now you can use do the same then on your bottom that's it on your bottom piece And then when you take that away, you can you can visually see between the between the washi tapes the size of your paper. But I like to I like to leave it floating floating around. That was tip three. My goodness, tip three. Now we need some paper. And here's some I prepared earlier. So this is this is quite a yeah this is this this is the paper out of that cover. So I know it's the right size for that cover. However, it's nice and tall for my for my page. So I need to just cut down a few of these in readiness. And I'm probably just going to I'm just going to take off about an inch on the bottom and then we can start folding and I might take and I might take some off too so that it's tall and slender and it will fit in here actually I should have put a timer on should I mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll do one, two, three, four. We'll do four at a time. Take these away. Well, actually, um, should we see if we've got any ones that are a bit, got any blank spots? 
That's 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 got a that's got a little bit of a blank spot. Maybe we can just use that one. Okay. So we'll do is we'll just take off and each one can be different when when you're mass making we don't have to measure they can just all be yeah see so that that needs to be taken down quite a way doesn't it Yep, I like that. Now if I just take down the side. Yep. Okay. We might put that like that. Right, so with this particular one, it doesn't matter which way you fold, practice just um for newbies, practice practice your folds. Just get just get your book pages and flip and fold and see what you come up with. It's amazing. It's amazing what you can come up with but I just take the top right hand corner of the first page and just fold it down into a nice triangle hmm. right so then you've got your flap on the front and if you want a, hmm, I don't know if I want a pocket. What do I want? So then what I do is I take the next page. I'm just holding them all together with my left hand into a, into a, and then I just, and because because this is the way it is, it's it's your eye. I don't measure anything. I just um, see what looks good. So we've got that one, which will be our first pocket, and then this one a little bit less. Hopefully, it'll be on the similar angle. And there you have it. That is our secret flip. And one, two, one, two, and then possibly even on the third, on the fourth, all ready to be decorated. And if you want a pocket on the front, you could get a, any piece of paper and glue on three sides and you've instantly got a pocket on the front which I like because um, and this is one this is one I've done because when you've got a pocket down here on this particular one whatever tag you put in here helps to keep that closed without any other catch you, you don't have to put any other closure so you just pop that in there and that keeps that closed which makes it not visible and therefore the impression that perhaps it's a hidden writing space. They're not really ready to go but I've just popped those in there. Right, so that was how we do that one.
and then all you have to do is just uh, use a paper clip until you're ready to decorate and then you're off and running now with the next one we'll take which will be this one this one we did earlier two pieces of paper we'll cut that down and by by cutting that by cutting this shorter and making this a shorter envelope I'm well actually no no I'm using the length to fold up to make the pocket I mean how easy is that it doesn't get any easier than that does it it really doesn't all right I'm just going to take a good chunk off that there's my template there's my piece of A4 so I know how I want it right so all we need to do with this one is fold up the bottom to whatever height you think is a good look I think that looks nice oh actually we can make it higher then you've got your pocket and all you can cut a little thumb hole here and we're just going to fold this fold this in and I have some some people can fold it out oh, well some people have done that it's just whatever is pleasing to your eye I like to sort of fold it so that there's a little square piece there and then the collar folded in and there you have it and all we have to do is pop a little hole in here and come back and decorate it up so that's nice and slimmer than this one so the pocket and if you leave it open down here when you I glue this up on this side and on this side but I've left that open so that that could hold a larger booklet rather than just the tag that's the exact right size very versatile so there's that one now there's this one and why don't we why don't we get a piece of digital for that with the roses on actually just just cut off the white and the other thing is too for newbies when you're making your signatures for that size whatever size cover that you've decided you will soon see what preference how many pages you like to put in each signature and I think I don't really have a set amount I like I like to do everything like I, I would hate to be mathematically minded and say right there's this amount of pages and therefore I will do this amount of pockets and therefore there will be this amount of tags I just have fun I just, 
if I make too many tags or too many journals or too many pages, then I um, then I'm ready for the next journal, aren't I? But there, there, there are there are people who like to do that. Okay, so we're making this one. So what happened there is that was an A4 digital, and we just fold it up in half like so and so you have that and then just decide which which way we want to go but I like to just just wing it like that no measuring just fold it in nicely And then that one will come over there like so. And yes, that will still fit lovely on the on the A4 folded page. Where's that bone folder? Mm. Gee, I wonder why I can't. Oh, here it is. I, <laughs> I wonder why I can't find anything. So that and that. And then I could come down like that. And that could come down like that. I like I like these because they remind me of shirts. Collars, the collars turned down. Now you'll see that that's different. That's different again to that one because I've got little pockets down here. And with this one I don't, but if you open that up, you've got a nice white writing space. And you could easily put a small tag in there, which could become a top pocket. For example, let's have a look. Well, there's a. You just put a. You just put a. A label or something there, or bigger than that, obviously. That's too big. You could put something else there and then that could become a little tuck spot. And we could fasten that down. And then when you open it out, that could be another writing space by simply putting down some of this paper that we bought today, that I bought today. So you could easily just pop that in there. You could even have it as a fold down. Well, actually, I think we just glue that down to show a writing space which which that will be a pocket so that will hide the writing when you put when you put your tag in there you won't see the writing paper the sky's the limit really you could do you could do um, two little pockets either side here. Just glue some 
loose something, something, something like a, a small tag sideways. Glue that there and you've got a little pocket to put some tiny little pieces of ephemera in. Or you could put a fold out quote. I like doing fold out quotes or fold out pieces of paper, concertina pieces of paper. Because um, I, I love my journal. I like writing in my journals and I like, I'm a big quote girl, so I love writing things down and keeping quotes all over the place. So you could do something like that. Sky's the limit. Isn't that pretty? And all we'd need to do would be to ink that up. And actually, because that's folded, that could be a secret pocket in there and then one behind. So many options. I like it. Right, so that was that. Now, which one? This one? These envelopes? Got a nice big piece of paper. It's the it's the book pages that are so good, and this is this is good too because it's taller, so that you can fold it fold it down. So what I've done is I've just folded that. Actually, what I've done instead of folding it right to the edge because I wanted to gusset I've left a little gap so that that can be that can be the gusset on the inside so that would be then glued down to that and across the bottom and then you fold down probably three quarters of the way down depending on how you want that to look and all you have to do is cut this top piece of this off because that, that's doubled over you don't need it doubled and just round the corners so what we would do is we would Okay, so first of all, I'm going to open it out. This is going to be our back flap. So we're just going to take off the foldy bit because we don't need it to glue down to anything. Just going to glue it down to the fold. And then we're going to just at an angle go like that. So that that will fold in and glue to that and then we don't need this piece here so we're just going to cut on the line to the middle and cut that out and then we have a nice little envelope but in order for this to fold down easily we need to make a a nice little cut here and a cut here and across the the, the front so that we can actually get in and in and out of the envelope so all we're going to do here is just Take that down and I'm not measuring anything I'm just going to go in for it probably to there and probably to there I'm just I was just using the lines of the typing there so that I could pretty much try and get it looking neat 
And there we go. Look at that. Just neaten it up. Actually, if I just... vintage photos so we can see what we're doing eh So all we have to do is just run a bead of glue. Whoops. Ah. Crash. Crash bandicoot. Just down the side here. Fold that over like that. And then just in the bottom, close the bottom up. And then we have a really, a really good envelope. And we just need a corner cutter. Okay. To do the flap. Just make sure we've got a nice crisp fold across there, across the top. Maybe it might need to come up just a fraction. Okay. there we have our coin envelope out of one sheet of book text and because it's got a gusset it will be so easy to get in and out of that you make enough of those and it is so quick and so easy you don't even have to think about it right so that's those done how are we going we've made a lot um, yeah, we've done all those. This was the big. This was the big one that um, we did the smaller version of. You might just that one that Tina did, and I've just decorated that up as a pack of cards. But that's just an A4 sheet of double-sided digital. Actually, it's not double-sided. I've covered the inside with um, coffee-dyed paper, just plain. But you could easily du just do a double-sided digital. Pop two little pockets there, fold it in half, and you've got a really nice insert there. So let's do let's do that one quick. I'm not sure how we're going for time. Let's see, another piece of that pretty digital. Okay. I mean, anything with roses on it, as far as I'm concerned, is fair game for Alice in Wonderland because painting the roses red, even though they're pink roses, it's a wonderful theme, I think. So, um, I guess I should, I guess I should take these off, shouldn't I? I don't know how to edit videos so what you see is what you get and they I try and I try and think about it before I turn the camera on and then we can do it really quickly and um, I can upload it to YouTube and you guys can always hit that fast forward button actually 
talking of uh, fast forward buttons and other buttons, uh, <laughs> if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and like. Let's let's do this. Right. So then all I do there is just basically we're going to fold it. We're going to fold it. Uh, this is landscape. And we're going to take one almost to the middle. And then this one. You just want it enough so that you can glue it. I think that looks pretty good. No measuring. But you just want this one to come so you've got enough space up the middle to glue. And this was Tina's Mass Make. Um, envelope out of uh, one sheet of paper then you want to open that up and just fold in the corners to the fold on all four corners not right to the fold but like not over the fold if you know what I mean, because you want it closed nice and so you've got you've got that and look at that and then all we do then is glue so we want to glue the glue the triangles the corners closed you don't need much glitter glue that's for sure I love this stuff even though it's really expensive, it's fast and easy and you don't get wet paper. I don't like, I don't like wet glues. I like Uhu glue stick for, that would also be good. But this is just so much quicker and neater. And then all I'm going to do is run a bead of glue up here. to keep that closed and I've gone over there so we'll just wipe that off right then we're going to fold it in the middle like so and there you have it now, what Tina then did was she got a piece of, um, I mean, you could just fill that with two tags and put two little pockets here, which would be a great idea. Um, 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 or, because it's Alice, you could, you could just put a quote there, glue that down three side, and then you've got a pocket. It's just not robust enough, though, I don't think. But we'll soon make it so, won't we? We can just glue it onto another piece of book page. I don't think I can ever run out of the book pages, ever. Okay. And voila, we have a pocket. Or we can use a tag that we've already got. Or a circle, anything that we've got, we could just glue that half down and use that then as a tuck spot. Just full, fill it full of goodies, which is a great idea. So a pocket there, a pocket there. And we could just leave it like that. We could just put some book text down here. Or we could cut we could Okay. Let's 
that's one that's one thing I've learned of T of of Tina too is when she folds I notice like and it's something that I wouldn't have done I usually undo something and then try and cut along the fold and inevitably you get a trough but if you just sliver that off on the fold you get the most incredible <laughs> straight line amazing and then that will slip in there and you can just cut it off so you can fold it there which is what I think was what Tina did and so when this is then closed this becomes the um, the fold out the, the envelope flip down so all you could do then is chop this off here around the corners whoops sorry about that and then just glue glue that in there or you could cover that with uh, writing paper make it longer down in here cover it with writing paper and then you could pull the whole thing out like a tag sky's the limit but as I say Tina's got wonderful um, oh there's so much I love I love Tina's channel right so that's our max making of the um, of those one A4 page and there's one that we there's one and there's one I prepared earlier <laughs> right oh goodness so the only ones we didn't do were those ones or the ones going the other way and all that was was three pieces three piece three three page three pages three book pages let's say we want them How wide did I do those? About here, okay. I'll just cut them off. Just line them up, cut them off. I like using my um, my cutter because, yeah, it cuts a nice straight line, doesn't it? And then, whatever height I want I might just have them all the same height and then all we're going to do is we're going to fold them all in half like so all together of course it would be nice if you folded it straight Daisy okay so we have one two three pieces of paper all the same size and we are going to glue one onto there and then that one onto there how easy is that and if we want to make it fancy we can get our scissors and just cut nicely across the top. So, 
going to need our lined paper. Actually, what I might do is I might quickly so that you can see the edge. Might stand out a little bit better, might it? really overcast here it's right in the middle of the day but um, the light seems to be fading I've got the overhead light on and I've got three lights on but I think we're probably going to get some rain which oh saints preserve us we've had three is it three or will this be the fourth we've had three major flood episodes within a year and I tell you what I mean we're lucky we haven't had our feet wet here but in in this house but there'd be that many people with PTSD every time they hear the rain falling they would be in a bad way I'd imagine right so that's how they're going to look so what we'll do is we'll uh, get the glue. I think we the, the Yoohoo. <laughs> what a funny name. Yoohoo. Anybody home? Saw your light on. Thought I'd drop in. Right, so I'll just put that down there like so. On the back page. Whoops. And glue that down so that will open like that and that's stuck to that and then we want to stick this one down like it's kind of like a waterfall that it's the waterfall idea isn't it Actually, this was done before I'd even heard of the term waterfall. Or maybe not. I shouldn't make sweeping statements. I can't remember. And then that one. Just glue that one down. Right. One, two, three. And then we'll just cover the insides with a oh, shame. It's not long enough. Oh well. It's not like we don't have uh, enough paper to go around. I'm sure we can work it out. Whoops. Whoops a daisy. Okay, that one's not long enough now. Okay. Get them all ready. They can make nice little booklets. Some other place. Okay. Okay. Right. Then all we have to do is chop the bottom off the same size. There we go. Whoops. Right. 
and I always like to tear too. For newbies, tear. Tearing helps the edges stick down so much better than cutting. But of course, I mean, you know, that's just generalized advice, isn't it? Because sometimes fussy cutting, for example, we, although I have, I have torn some things around by hand to make them look, but if you want something to go down um, really well, especially in the vintage style, tearing makes all the difference. And if you're going to fussy cut, um, Laurie Marie Jenkins used to always say to us, I'd rather you cut into the image than leave space around it. And then another two on here. This is really fine lined paper, so it's not adding a lot of bulk. Now it's the wrong size. <laughs> Duh. Duh, duh, duh. Doesn't matter. Okay, and that can just go in there like that. Actually, I'll come back later and, and fix these up. These look a bit rough and ready. Because I'm, I'm somehow, I feel pressurized and I'm trying to show you as much as I can instead of just making another video okay but we all have our favorite folds and pockets ideas so I think I think getting that getting a few samples together and particularly if it's anything new I mean people come up with extraordinary ideas when I'm looking at YouTube, because I follow a lot of people and um, I'm interested in a wide variety of things. So I have it like usually at breakfast time or uh, while I'm yeah at the, at the table, I always have a book and a pen next to me and I jot down the idea. I do even do a little diagram of the idea, the name of the person I saw doing it, etc. So, yeah, voila, <laughs> that's pathetic, <laughs> I'll fix that up, but um, yeah, now you get, now you get the waterfall notepad, which is a nice little addition, and you could really go to town decorating that one up, so that, see, that looks a lot better when you take your time, Di. Letting the team down here, aren't I? Right, so I think we've pretty much done um, a lot of Alice Ephemera for today, but also I chopped out a really fat heart from a magazine. It's so hard to get that heart shape, that, that um, chocolate box valentine perfect fat heart I mean you can draw it any way you can draw it any way you like but I just thought this this shape was lovely so I drew it out of a mag I cut it out of a magazine and then I've covered it and I've put it onto a couple of different layers and I use that as my template and that makes fun in Alice journals um, because You can cover them with music paper and then emboss. I've stamped and embossed over that. What a great closure, tuck spot, um, pure decoration. You can put that you can put that on anything and it looks beautiful. And they're a fun thing to have and you could put it in any album that you did on any subject basically. So what a lovely stash of those. That, that you can have and you could also cover it with fabric you could texture paste them so I've got some of those for my Alice journal let's see 
these are those wonderful envelopes um i did write that down and stuck it in here where is that aha uh -huh. shabby dabby doodah workshop 62 envelope books where she took an envelope and she covered covered the flap and just put a piece of paper in behind it folded it in half and that that nice pointy flap then becomes two pockets and I've made a couple of those so I just I just think you know Tina's done a great job there so yep that's Tina's little envelope books workshop 62 check that out there's another one um, it's just really hard to find the envelopes with that beautiful V V but you could open one out trace it and voila you've got your own template make your own envelopes so that's another option um, what else have I done for my Alice ephemera just before we wrap it up I got some Tim Holtz um, hands watch hands and I've put them through this was an old card and I've just got a little brad there so that they can move and then that can be a pocket and that can be even a um, a tuck spot behind then I found this image of a pocket watch I mean we're talking white rabbit and Alice in Wonderland so a pocket watch is pretty good that was in a Daphne's diary so I've cut that out put it onto card and backed it that is my tag and won't that be a match made in heaven that will fit beautifully in behind there as a tag a pocket and tag so I've got that ready to go obviously I haven't got three of those only one and these were just some tiny smaller shorter ones I've used some washi tape on each fold there and I've silver embossed a nice design on the uh, secret flap this one uh, the same thing except I've just used a big uh, this was off a digital kit and I've backed it onto card and used it as the means to close the secret writing spot and just um, used up some of my washi tapes there which I like to do too because you can if you've got these gorgeous things why not use them that's an, that's another one of those shabby dabby doodah little book envelope booklets so there's those and the other thing I love to include uh, with my Alice journals that's another way to use the heart trace it out on some um, not too stiff but um, yeah a good weight I suppose if I had to guess I mean that's out of a Daphne's diary and it's and it's a bit of cardboard insert if I had to guess I'd say it's probably 180 GSM just cut out the heart shape and get some dressmaker old pattern layer it up quite 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 thick because it's so fine and trace around it do your heart shape of that cut it all out stitch it down the middle and then you glue this and this onto your fold center fold of into a center of the signature and so when the page is opened you've got a beautiful little heart and you just can't help but flick through those soft soft pattern paper it is so tactile and you could do it really big if you could do a big heart that would be absolutely stunning as well I think they're called pop-ups but I love the heart right um now what else have I got hidden and then I think that'll pretty much that'll that'll pretty much um, 
do it, I think, for the Alice Ephemera. Um, let's see, what else do I like to include? I like to include printed vellum as a, as a flip. And you could use any beautiful image for that. Uh, let's see. And I like to use um, tatting, uh, a doilies, because they're beautiful on top of um, tags. And paper paper roses stuck to the edge of a journal card, perhaps, um, especially in in the middle up the top into a top loading envelope, so that the book won't, so that they can peek above the top of the book. That is a great idea. Oh, and I think if, if you've ever seen my Alice journals, you'll always find a key belly band. And these are covered with, um, 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 what are they called? Glossy accents to make them really, to make them really sturdy. I print them out and, you know, put them on layers of paper so that they're, they're quite sturdy. And then you can glue them top and bottom and then what a great belly band. And I've just got and looked free, free images on, on the internet, um, or I think I looked up vintage keys and of course you can print it out on your printer any size you want it's free and and they make a wonderful and you could probably do free downloads of pocket watches there's free Alice images I love the silhouettes I don't think I've got a digital printout uh, just to hand of a silhouette that is um, that is a nice picture that I've printed onto vellum. Um, I think it was from a line dot arrow Alice in Wonderland kit with the clubs in the background. Those pretty roses, and uh, yeah, you can just pop that down and use it as a flip. Um, what else? What else? There must be more. Oh, these we didn't do, but what they are is two index cards, one on top of the other. You fold the first one and you just glue this half down onto it. And of course, when it's folded back, it makes a secret writing space. And you can just put a little tab there to hold that shut. And then you've got that page as well, which you can cover. I've done them as a check and had the image split down the mat, but you can't see that it's split. And so then you can lift the image up to uncover the writing space. And also you can use it as a, um, as a pocket in behind, which is really, 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 really lovely. I love that. Oh, let's not forget teapots, Alice and teacups. And teapots so that is I think that was cut out of a magazine and I have painted it with uh, gold acrylic paint and I've put a little a label on there saying high tea but I've also got a cup and I love doing uh, embossing on the cups That was an actual um, inclusion, one of those free tear outs in one of the Daphne Diaries magazine for an invitation. It might have been, I'm thinking it might have been Valentine's Day issue on some year, and there was about four of them. But how appropriate are they for an Alice in Wonderland journal? And you don't have to do a thing, they're just you just include them. They were meant to tear out of the magazine and use for an invitation. So that is pretty cool. And here's some teapots I did. I downloaded a free image of a teapot and I've covered it with some nice paper and I've gold embossed. So that makes a lovely teapot. And I mean, what a lovely pocket. Um, you could put a brad in the middle and have that tipping into a cup of tea. And where is the cup? Ah, yes, I have the cup. And of course, when you download these free images, 
you can you can then print them out and uh, and do the mini size you want so you've got a nice cup I should do a saucer for that and look at that you could have that tipping tipping into the into the cup for the Mad Hatter's tea party I mean it's only as much as your imagination that's why I love Alice journals because they are so fun I mean it's um it's it's yeah you you're only limited by your by your imagination it's so much fun you come up with so many things let's see so we've got um let's see i saw somebody do something the other day and i thought oh i've got to give that a go Oh yeah, well, um, actually, Tim Holtz does this die cut thing that uh, you just you just you know you can slot something down there and something down there and like a what am I trying to say like a pocket and I came across this I, I just thought I'll make my own pocket and so I've done some bigger holes so I just cut that with a exacto knife knife and I thought I was going to do something really clever with that and now it escapes me which <laughs> is not unusual oh lordy I hope you're enjoying I hope you're enjoying this <laughs> if not fast forward through to the end actually um for newbies too anybody with a youtube channel if you start watching and you want to fast forward just slide use your mouse and grab onto that little um, you could you can actually drag it right along the bottom of the screen and fast forward it to the end and that means that they get one whole view even though you may have only watched a little bit in the beginning and a little bit in the middle and one at the end because I mean let's face it if it's an hour long and you haven't got that time we all fast forward and just you know but you can just slide that um, butter along and so instead of clicking off I always sit that's why I've got about 500 subscribe subscriptions because I like to subscribe to everybody and I try and give them all a view and obviously I can't watch 500 a day I want to create so I slide that bar when I've learned what I need to learn I slide it along to the end so they actually get registered that they get a whole view and then their numbers go up and so if you hit the like subscribe um, buttons that's really important it it's costs you nothing to subscribe to everybody and you know like and hit that little bell icon uh, at the top so that you get everything that they put up when they put it up and you can always unsubscribe later or I mean when you really have a few people that you want to watch all the time we all have our favorites don't we then they will be on the top of your list anyway they'll just keep coming up and up and up and you just you can just go to your favorites all the time but yeah especially for newbies um, I always try and subscribe to everybody's channel because you know it's just I just think it's marvelous I can I can tell you how grateful I am that 642 marvelous people <laughs> creators um, have subbed to to my YouTube channel I get such a kick out of it honestly I, I know it's numbers but I just I just do I get such a kick out of it And I've heard people say that, oh, you know, once you get over the thousand, you know, you can they can monetize. And then some people whinge and say, oh, I haven't got enough now. I, I get $10. <laughs> I'm like, $10? That will still buy you a couple of reams of um, photocopy paper so that you can keep on creating. I mean, seriously. Be grateful. I'm only, I'm only, um, I'm, I'm here for a good time. I'm here for a good time not a long time is it is it is it the saying what time is it 
Good Lord, it's quarter to three. I, I've got a funny feeling I'm supposed to be cooking dinner tonight. So, my darlings, my fellow creators, that is just a few thoughts on my Alice ephemera and having fun. I'll, I'll try and come back tomorrow and we might decorate some, um, some of all those wonderful blanks up. That'll keep us busy and out of mischief, won't it? Thank you so much for subbing. Thank you so much for liking, for commenting. Um, yeah, I, I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are. And I can't wait to see all the stuff that you're getting up to. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. See ya.